In this Light Burns Hints video, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on with the red in your preview screen, how you can get rid of it, and how you'll be able to use it to improve your Light Burn projects. Let's go! Okay, I get this question all the time from a lot of people starting out with Lightburn or they might have upgraded and it's kind of simple when you understand the mechanics behind it, but it's pretty terrifying if you're in the middle of a job and not too sure what's going on. So let me bring in a graphic. Let me quickly do this. I'll just pull this up. Let's go to desktop and we'll grab this logo. And there we have a pretty well-known logo, I think something that I've been uh, drawing for quite some time. Anyway, we have an image here. This is an image. We can see that because right here on the image layer, it's defined as that. And if we go straight to preview, we can see a whole bunch of red lines. And this is what freaks a lot of people out. In fact, this is probably why you're at the video right now. So let me show you how you can turn those red lines off. If this is the very first time you've seen it. And it's very simple. There's this com uh, command or toggle switch here called show traversal moves. It's really in interesting. When you actually turn it off, the red lines disappear. That's how quickly you can actually fix up the red lines if they're freaking you out. But the red lines also give you some really important information when using Lightburn. So if that's all you wanted to know, click off and get back to using your laser. Otherwise, stick around. I'm gonna to explain to you why this information being displayed in the preview window will help you maximize your laser cutting jobs. If you love this type of content, hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. And we'll make sure that we make more content like this for the next time you visit. And while you're at it, drop into the laser live streams, especially when they're live, so you can meet other laserologists, share your projects and talk all things laser. But until the next video comes around or you join us for the next laser live stream, we'll jump back to this tutorial and continue sharing what we know about lasers and light burn. So I've turned on the red lines that the show traversal moves and what this actually means and what it's actually communicating to you is the way the laser is actually going to move across your work plane. So obviously the dark areas, the laser is going to turn on the laser, either engrave or cut depending on what your power settings are. But you can actually see when we slide this back and forth, I'm just gonna do it slowly here. You can actually see that's the, the there's a little uh, crosshair that's moving back and forth. And every time you see the, the red area of the image, the laser is off, but the laser head has to move back and forth. Sometimes that can hold up a job. It can actually make your job time a lot greater. So what I want to show you is where you can get kind of tricked up a little bit about the graphics that you're bringing into Lightburn and how that information in that preview screen can actually help you. So uh, let me show you the first one. Let's import. We're going to look at uh, that original logo. It's a little bit bigger, so let me scale it down. Put it on the screen. I'm going to reset the view and let's go back into the preview. What's great about this is that the graphic is on a alpha channel, meaning the background is completely cut out and you can see that the only information that's being displayed within Lightburn happens to be the graphic itself. It's a nice strong black color and you can see it's almost like it's completely clear. That's one type of graphic. They're great because it's, this acts almost like a decal, meaning that anything below the, where you're putting the graphic comes through. And as far as Lightburn is concerned, this is really, really easy to prepare and to get the result that you want. Let's get rid of that. And let me show you the next version. And that happens to be a image. So this is a color image. This is a PNG file. And you can see here that the way it's actually displayed, you can see it's in a box. This is literally a image graphic that you can get off the internet or that you could create yourself, but it doesn't have that alpha channel on it. So you can see the white background within the image, but Lightburn is really good at distinguishing where the image information is and where a wide background is. So as far as light burns concerned, when we preview it, you can see here that it takes out most of that background. You can see that there's a tiny little piece uh, over here and over here. 
that happens to be a almost like a pixel within the white background that Lightburn is is finding and therefore is traversing to turn the laser back on and off. But for most cases, this is what you're going to deal with. And that's okay. That's cool. Those tiny little traverses, it's not going to take too much time off your job. There's a third version that I want to introduce you to. I'm going to use the same graphic here again, but this is a different version. Let me import this in. So in this case, here's the graphic yet a third time, but this is a little different. It's on a white background. It's, a, it's an image file, but it happens to be a little bit off the color white. So white has a certain value that Lightburn will go, okay, cool, that's a, that's a background. I'm gonna remove that information. And when we go to the preview, you're gonna see that we've got all these red lines here, all of it. This is all areas that it's gonna traverse. And this sometimes catches people out, especially when you're beginning with Lightburn or you're using graphics that have been given to you by a third party. This can be incredibly frustrating. At this point in time, we're using ridiculous uh, speeds speed of 6,000 and a power setting of 20. That's never gonna be used in any laser that I know, maybe in the future sometime, maybe a Death Star, maybe that's where we can now use that sort of settings. But you can see it's almost two hours as opposed to before when we're looking at about 25 minutes, just under 25 minutes. So you've got lots and lots of movement on your laser. So what do you do about this? Well, there's two quick answers. I'm gonna show these to you in Gil's Tips. For this week's Gills Tips, I'm going to show you two very quick answers that if you ever run into this problem and you're in the middle of a job, you're not too sure what's going on, but you've got to finish the job. This is two ways that I would tackle an issue like this. First of all, really simple, is I would trace the image and turn it into a fill. I can do that quite simply by right-clicking the image and then going to Trace Image. By tracing the image, and hitting OK, I can remove the graphic layer and I now have the trace. We will actually make it a fill. So what we're going to do now is fill this all with color the same way that the image that we wanted to import into Lightburn was going to either engrave or fill and cut or whatever the operation is that you want to complete. We're then going to preview it. And again, you can see that we have the image around with all the information there we can actually see right here and right here there happens to be two little artifacts it's really easy to clean up now we're going to click and select the image we're going to split it into separate pieces by hitting ungroup and then i'm going to select and there's the first artifact down here let's see if we can find the second one we did we're going to click that again now there's nothing else here so we're not going to group it again but let's see what happens when we do it and we've got a very, very clear image that we are going to then run as a fill. Okay, it's a little bit longer. It's uh, 50, uh, 45 minutes um, at these settings, these made up settings that I'm using. Don't ever use the settings you see in, a, in anyone's uh, YouTube video. I feel that you always got to run your own tests. And if you're interested in learning how to do that, you can check the video with the link that's coming up right now. With the results that you've gotten here, you can then take that graphic and you can place it on your artwork or on the job anywhere you want. So that's the very first way that I would try to answer a problem within the actual workflow when you've got to get the job done. On to my second tip. Gil's tip number two to try and fix the artwork. What you can do is you can grab a box and actually pull it around the artwork now, at this point over here, it's actually selected as a line. I'm going to actually make it a tool line. That way, if I forget or I'm in a hurry, that information is not going to be sent to the laser. It's not going to be a job that's going to go towards it. I'm going to select it again, and then I'm just going to pull it as close as I can to the area that I want to engrave or transfer onto the material. And you know, you can make, you can spend a very quick amount of time just really bringing that up right to the top layers and there's a little bit here too and this isn't really anything fancy you can 
make a shape and try to get a lot closer or you could try to put that into a, an extended circle that's totally up to you i like to move, move fast and what i'm going to do now is select both of these things right click and go into apply mask to image and at this point if we click off and go to the preview we have now made the traversal area the area that the laser head is going to move back and forth a lot smaller so we've already in taken it from like two hours two plus hours to just under an hour just in that small little edit if you want to know more about masking go check out this tutorial that i made all about masking and how this can save you when you're actually editing images within lightburn and those are two ways that you can use the traversal information those red lines in the preview window to make your jobs faster and get the results you want every time. And that's it. As you can see, it's really easy to set up Lightburn to ignore the traversal mode in the preview window, or you can use it to improve your laser workflow. Really, it's just up to you. Until next time, go check out some of these videos right here. And we look forward to seeing what you make with your laser. Go set, make something amazing.